Oh, Noe, again, thanks for coming on and yeah. switching seats and all that stuff. Uh, the next guest is a guy that I've known about for quite some time. Um, I've known his mentor and coach, a guy named Jason Troth, now known as Jason Cannon. My guest is his protege, who also just returned from the Olympics in Beijing. His name is Lucas Foster, and I believe he's uh, quite an all-around ripper from Telluride. Let's bring him on out. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for coming on, Lucas. Yeah, my it's, pleasure. Uh, I'm sure you've had a busy schedule um, since, I don't know when, like the fall, I'm guessing, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's been a long season. The last month or so has been more chill and been able to get back to just free riding and not having an agenda, so that's been nice and enjoying that for sure. Yeah, and I, I know the uh, format for making the Olympic team, um, it's still the same, five events, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know until maybe the last event where you're at. So how was that yeah. roller coaster ride for you and your family and everything else? Yeah, it was, it was hectic. And I also was like, definitely not on the like horizon for making the team i was kind of an underdog so like doing well there and i was still on the rookie team i was like all right i could actually make this team so then you have to go through like the whole summer and the fall like knowing you're off to a good start so it was kind of like uh every day you kind of wanted to make sure you were doing something to like stay on that track of you know riding well and trying to make that team and yeah, the last four events this past season were crazy. And like, just with all the other stuff going on with COVID and like, you know, in order to stay kind of in contention and riding at this level these days, you gotta be riding half pipe a lot. So it's like, we're either competing or just like lapping pipe. Were you born in Telluride? Yeah, yeah, born and raised and grew up there and pretty much, yeah, rode Telluride. That was my home mountain until like probably last season. Then I started riding up here more, but uh, but yeah, like tell you, I didn't have a half pipe, so I was not. I'm not used to riding half pipe regularly. Your dad's the one who got you into snowboarding, and and your yeah. godfather as well. Yeah, I mean, I'd say more my dad. My dad, Steve Foster, he's lived in Telluride since like 1995, and uh, yeah, I mean, he's just like your your classic like ski bum, and I mean that in a great way, like. He, he loves snowboarding so much. It's that's like his thing. And I grew up just free riding with him and my mom. And that's all we did for years from like age eight to 11. All I knew was just being a weekend warrior, free riding and taking maybe a park lap in the morning before going up high. And I had no idea really about the Olympics or competing that just, it didn't exist in my opinion. The only thing that snowboarding was, was just shredding with my parents and as i got older and started to meet other you know kids my age that were snowboarding then i was like oh like there's competitions there's pro snowboarders there's sponsors like that seems cool but yeah like that start definitely is the reason why i still have like the passion for just riding everything today so tell me about jason and and how you met him and and how he's influenced you in your life as well as snowboarding for sure, yeah. I mean, I met Jason, I knew about him for years, but uh, he was coaching Harry Carney and Hagen Carney as they were coming up from like when they were 11 year olds till they were 18, 19, and pretty much like raised, not raised those kids, but like, you know, got them to where they're at now and snowboarding or was a big part of it. So I knew he was like a, a good coach, but then when I met him, I really realized why he was doing such a good job with those guys. And it's because Jason, he, he had this really different perspective that most coaches don't have, which is, you know, everything in snowboarding, but also in life is very holistic. One thing that Jason and I did a lot when I was coming up was just learning how to free ride properly. And he was taking me to Baker for years, racing the bank slalom and would always kind of remind me that like, hey, this right here is, this is snowboarding, this is more difficult than a half pipe contest. This is more difficult than, you know, doing a double cork on a jump, learning how to turn properly. Without his knowledge, I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of a lot of the opportunities that I've gotten 
you know, and really optimized everything that I've had. It's nice to hear, you know, your experience, not just on the mountain, but off the mountain too, with someone like that. Yeah, um, definitely. How was your Olympic experience? It was crazy. I mean, definitely you're very isolated at the Olympics, whether it's COVID or not. It was cool though, cause like the half pipe was really good and the accommodations were good. Like they really had everything pretty dialed over there from my perspective. The opening ceremonies was crazy. And just like, I'd say being on the team with, with three riders that I've really watched since I was like Noah's age was crazy. Cause I mean, Taylor Gold, I remember watching him make the Olympics when I was like 13 and watching him just dominate for years, Chase Josie, and then obviously like being on a team with Sean White was nuts. I never thought, I thought he would retire after like 2014 and whatever, eight years later, I'm on a team with him. That was nuts. So I was like very, I was, I was humbled to like make that team and just like be in the presence of those guys. The kind of curveball is there was some controversy in the middle of it with, with Pete Foley and all that. That must have been a little bit bizarre to deal with as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the a lot of the Foley stuff that was really disturbing, definitely uh, a pretty crazy time for the U.S. team. But uh, yeah, I mean, very, very disturbing to see stuff like that happening and um, yeah, we've been having some meetings with the team about that whole situation and just like moving forward, how to make that make the team culture just more of like, a, I mean, yeah, like what all the allegations about Peter, like that stuff just can't be happening. And the team's definitely taking action to make sure that we make the team environment more open so that when stuff like that happens which it never should but if it ever does again it's got to be brought into light immediately and so i hope just that the proper change is made what are your plans for summer in the future you get catching up on sleep at least <laughs> yeah for sure definitely <laughs> like trying to just chill a little bit and like got some fun stuff in the spring coming up going to europe for this monster trip and then go to Mammoth for some spring riding and uh, skateboard a lot this summer. I skate a ton, but I want to have like a good summer of like skating hard and uh, go to hood and ride for like a month out there. And, and yeah, just kind of enjoy like having a summer of like not having the Olympics coming up. Cause that was a, it was a fun summer last year, but it was, you know, every single day you're like trying to walk around eggshells, making sure you're not like getting hurt skating. What are your uh, longer term goals in, in snowboarding and life? And, and what's your favorite thing to do when you're snowboarding? Favorite thing to do when snowboarding is, I mean, dude, it's every day snowboarding is great. I think my favorite thing is free riding at home still to this day. like. Free riding, tell your ride on a powder day is unlike any other thing. And obviously like a slushy park day is sick too, but there's nothing like, you know, riding big mountains and like being really kind of in tune with nature and like learning how to navigate around mountains rather than like just flinging yourself off park jumps. I think there's something special about that, but uh, yeah, long-term goals, like I'm 22, so I still have some years left fingers crossed at least. And uh, I want to keep competing for these next few years just because I feel like it's working pretty well. And I want to have yet to like crack a really big podium. And that's getting harder and harder these days with Japan being so good. But I want to get on the podium and kind of be a regular on the podium. That's like definitely a big goal of mine. And then I'm also trying to start working towards like giving back to snowboarding more and uh, trying to be like an active member of the community and trying to make it more accessible and, and just more of a free sport where, you know, like we're saying, snowboarding is supposed to be punk rock. Snowboarding is supposed to be a free sport without structure, in my opinion. So I want to do what I can to be an example for kids and to show them that like everyone's welcome. And uh, I think that all starts with just being a positive role model in the mountain. That's a big goal of mine. That's like the, that's the ultimate reward is if you can give back.
And so, I mean, I'm just listening to you talk and it stokes me out a lot to hear yeah. such a young guy. I mean, you're, you're, I guess, older than, than <laughs> this guy for sure, but mm -hmm. um, you're still really young and you have such a grounded, positive, awesome outlook. And I, I would imagine you've got sponsors that are backing you up, do you? Yeah, I do. Who do you got? Solomon, Smith, Monster, Volcom's been helping me out a little bit. Um, are they financially helping you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Monster for sure. They've been amazing. Like they've, I wouldn't be here without those guys. And then Solomon's been pretty sick. I've been on Solomon for like almost 10 years now. Um, and then some other like smaller companies like this company Roan, um, Christy Sports has been helping me out a bit too. It's uh, great to see that you've got solid backing and solid sponsorship because too many kids don't and it's such an expensive sport to be involved in. Totally. So it's uh, great that, that you're making your way and I guess I really appreciate, I, I know I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? No, I mean, I'm stoked that you're doing this show. Like, I know you're a legend in the sport and I think we got to keep the legends involved in some way. So glad you're doing this and bring in your perspective because wow. people need to hear it. I think Thank so. you. that's one thing Jason and I have talked about is how like snowboarders in the snowboard industry these days doesn't really like remember our superheroes of the sport much. You know, guys like Terry, I mean, obviously Terry is still around and like re well respected, but like a lot of kids don't know about the guys that have really like pioneered our sport. Guys like Rankwood and, you know, Noah Selaznik, just random, other people, Jamie Lynn. It is interesting to see how the superheroes are kind of forgotten very quick, you know. I really appreciate the time that both of you guys have taken again. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Stoked. Thank you guys. Yeah.